How you doing? And thanks for watching. It's Georgia. Wicked Warnings, your number one source for construction and emergency safety and strobe lighting equipment, such as items for cars, vans, trucks, buses, SUVs, everything in between, bicycles, tricycles. What we're looking at is a 2020 Ford Explorer, brand new Ford Explorer with those real fancy brand new LED headlights. We wanted an easy kit, four corner kit. You could do in white or amber or green or red or blue or even purple. So this kit here, you can do in all the different colors. What you're seeing is a pair of our TIR3s mounted in the front bumper cover there on a 90 degree bracket. Our LIN6 will also fit there on a 90 degree bracket. And there will be a good tutorial also for this kit. I did a full kind of run through of the install, showed you all the goodies and the details. We'll put that at the end of the video. So right now you're seeing that TIR and Amber alternating in the front there. Simple, nice, easy, effective. I like this mount too because it keeps the light back far enough that a car wash brush is probably not going to affect it. You can see here it's kind of tucked back in there. So hopefully they stay in a nice, long, happy life there without getting smashed off by a car wash or anything like that. Around the back of the car, we're in the turn signal bucket with a hideaway. You can use either a low dome or a high dome. Plenty of room in these lenses. You could also supplement this with another color below that in the reverse if you wanted. Um, totally up to you. And as I said, we got hideaways in every color. So whatever your combination of color you like, you can have on this vehicle. We did make a kit for all the wiring and connectors and everything that you should need to put this together. So check at the end of the video for details on this install and links to all the different products. Thanks again for watching Wicked Warnings. I hope you tune in soon, see some more good videos and keep us in mind. We are your number one source for construction and emergency LED safety and strobe lighting equipment. I'll see you on the next video. I almost forgot, there's the switch. Nice blue full illumination right there. And uh, as I said, we're gonna show you some more in-depth video details right now. All right, hello everybody. This is gonna be kind of the uh, install portion, the install information portion of the video. I'll try to show you everything I did. Um, this is a 2020 Ford Explorer. You can tell it's a 2020, it's got those fancy new LED headlights. So this is what we did, uh, seemed to work pretty good for us. If you like it, you could do something similar. If not, no big deal. Uh, I'm not claiming to be an expert that this is the best way in the world to do anything. I'm just showing you what worked for us. So in the front here, as you saw in the video, we've got our TIR3s. The way that we mounted those was with a 90 degree bracket. Like that. And we were able to use a six inch drill bit to go right up like that. We lined the bracket right up with the edge of that black right here. And we used the supply screws to mount it with the bracket. It worked out fairly well. They're not tipped up very much, just a slight, slight upward angle, which is okay considering how low they are on the vehicle. We ran a fish tape right this way, kind of behind the bumper on each side. It's easier on the driver's side, but we did run that fish tape. We prepared all the wire. We used a 22.5 power control to extend both of these T3s all the way back into the cabin of the truck. We came up behind the headlight with the wire here. You can kind of see down in there where the wire goes. See it down in there? Okay, then we took it right under the main radiator support, took it down this way, right behind here. The other wire, pretty much the same location. It's coming up through here. Now I did, and I do recommend leaving a couple loops of wire there. Reason being is you can loosen up those loops and you could pull the front bumper off if you needed to for some reason without cutting out wires so we put a couple of loops right there leave a little bit of extra slack or if the body shop did want to cut the wires they at least have nice long wire to make the reconnect uh, but you really don't have to cut them you could take it off without cutting them so up here 
We ran right under into there, into the battery well, fuse compartment. Here in the fuse panel, we used our fuse holder. This big aluminum bar here shows a real good ground. So we use a self-tapper screw right here into the top of it. Now there is a ground factory buried back there, but you do take the risk of dropping that bolt and uh, it's really kind of difficult to get to. So it just seemed to be nice and easy to do a self-tapper right there and grab a good ground. On the power stud for the fuse box here underneath the cover, you can put an eight millimeter bolt right on top of the factory eight millimeter bolt. You don't even need to take the bolt out for the factory wire, you can just double nut it. Uh, it's actually a nut, not a bolt, sorry about that. So you put another nut on top and uh, put your ring terminal between the nuts and tighten it up. <laughs> right. So that's how we got that. The wiring goes down and you can see right down here, right there, there's a factory grommet that we're actually going through right to the lower left of the main wire harness you see there there's a rubber plug so that's where we're running all our wire right through that rubber plug and we did leave some extra wire down here so we can move it around and I do want to say uh, stay away from this linkage this linkage here this moves this is your wipers so don't go putting any wires anywhere near any of this because this moves back and forth so we're gonna actually tuck the fuse right over here along the side like that and keep it tucked away from any of those wiper linkages so that's how we're doing it on the front let's see how this looks from inside okay so i've uncovered quite a bit here so you can kind of see what we're talking about uh there's your factory wire pass through there is a uh, nipple you could cut off uh, and try to go through the factory boot but it is extremely difficult and uh very hard to get to so that little rubber boot right there seems to work real good i also wrote in blue marker there that blue reflective if you needed to drill your own hole for some reason if this rubber plug isn't there or if you needed uh to put a lot of wire through one of these cars you could drill another hole right next to it um, all the way up to probably one inch and get a one inch rubber grommet and put it in there so that's your option um, we're going to tidy up all those wires we brought them up here right here behind the fuse panel on the inside and this is where we mounted our switch right here now the one thing i will say i want to mount this a little bit lower next time you can see i went pretty much even with the top of this panel and it was just a little close to a metal brace back there so when you drill your switch go about three eighths of an inch below the top of this panel and your switch will fit a little bit easier than mine that'll be a little note i'll put in the video also we tucked up our wiring all behind here now to wire to the rear of the vehicle i'm gonna actually we started behind this panel now this is a little bit funky taking this apart we actually didn't if you want to take this apart and remove this whole driver's kick feel free you can what i did is i tucked underneath here and i was able i was able to pull up this half of the kick easy without removing this so we popped it loose we pulled it up here we were able to tuck under the front here get the wiring all underneath here we were able to pass a little fish tape through here, bring the wiring out the back. So that's how you get this area here all wired. With your 18.5 that's gonna be heading from your switch to the rear of the vehicle to do your hideaways most likely. Here you can see where we have it. Kind of coming out from under there. It's running right through here. It's running to the back. We went underneath this factory thing here, around the back of the seat belt. And here, right in here, honestly, if you put your hand in here and you put your hand in there, you can almost touch your fingers. So it's pretty easy to go from here to here, right? That, that's that's a no-brainer right there. And then this panel, this panel right here, this is what it looks like. So here's what we're looking at. We got some clips. We've got some of these rectangular plugins here. <laughs> and we got this one yellow clip. This yellow clip might actually stay down in there, uh, but that's the panel. That's what you're gonna be looking at to remove it. Basically just pulls up pretty, pretty easy on that one. 
All right, let me show you from this point back. Okay, so in the back here, you can see we've removed uh, a few panels, but these are very easy to remove. Don't be intimidated. Um, there we go. It's like the cup holder panel on the left side here. It all just pops straight up and out. Same thing on the right side. The panels just pop straight up and out. All this stuff in the middle just pulls right out. This panel here, well, the way you pull it out is pull it out and up. So you can pull it this way and pull it up, and that'll remove like that. You'll end up with this pile of stuff on the floor. Like I say, here's your, your little cup holder panel for the left side. And then here's what it looks like underneath it. You can see it's just the clips that drop right down in place. And then this is your spare tire panel. And you can see here how that one, you have to pull it out and then up. See? So that's going to be in the car like that. Then you need to pull the bottom out and then up. All this stuff just basically falls right out of the car. Okay. So once you get it disassembled, <clears throat> behind the tail light here, you'll see this rubber plug. And uh, I like to put a hole in that rubber plug, a nice little hole just like that. And how I do that, my favorite tool is this. It's a 3 16 punch. Uh, I use a backer, a little block of wood behind it, and put it through there. And uh, this seems to work very well for me. That hole is to pass the hideaway wire through. You're going to put your hideaway wire through that hole nicely. Then you're going to put this grommet right back in there. This grommet just pops right in, super easy. When you put the hideaway wire in there, it's very easy to get it right on the other side. You just reach up underneath there, and you can find it right away. So this side is already done. Um, I guess I should tell you how to take the tail light out first. First thing you're going to see is these panels right here. These little side panels. And I want to say those remove like this. They're going to snap in on the top. So you're going to want to pry out on the top and up on the bottom. And that's, they go in like this. Okay. See, right like this. So when you pry them to remove them, pry on the top. Because if you pry on the sides and the bottom, you're liable to break them. So they go in like that. And then inside of there, you'll see a plastic 11 millimeter nut, bolt, thing, whatever that is, spring mechanism. That's the main thing that holds the light in. Uh, 11 millimeter, you use a hand tool for that because it's easy to break it. And once you take that out, the whole light will pop right out. And you'll be left with this. Now here's what the light looks like when it's out of the vehicle. You'll see it has a little pin back here. That little pin kind of snaps into the side of the vehicle. So if you're having a little problem with the light removal, that little pin right there in the corner might be your trouble. And once you get the light out, this rubber thing here also just pops right off. Just lines up with these little tabs. You can get that out of your way right now. And this is where you're going to be wanting to drill your hole. I think this is about the easiest place to drill. Nice, flat hole. Easy to mount a hideaway right there. You can use any of our hideaways. Low dome, high dome, doesn't matter. Here's a high dome, for instance. Mounts right in there. You can see plenty of room, so no issues at all. And this is how we mount the light. We mount that in there. This is what we take over into there. This is my favorite tool for removing those little panels. It's a very thin, very thin pry bar. The thicker pry bars seem to leave gouges in the plastic. So we found these on Amazon, really thin little tools. You got a one inch hole saw for drilling a hole. Always, when you drill your hole, always, always, it's like a two person operation. Hold it on the edge, hold it down, drill from the bottom up and make sure your shop vac is close by because you want to suck all those shavings out of there before they go scattering all around the lens. The other way is a one inch unibit like this. Uh, this leaves a nice clean hole. Either one of these more than acceptable is your 11 millimeter socket. Once again, there's your punch tool, three sixteenths. So um, the end result, again, going to be a nice clean hole right about there. That's what we're going to seal our hideaway into. That's going to give us our color. Now, if you wanted two hideaways, sure, you could put another one down here. Uh, same style, same location. And then you're going to get an upper or lower flash on this lens. So totally acceptable. And if you wanted, you could even put it 
down here if you really wanted you just have to use a lot more silicone because this is not very level here so seems like it's easy to seal here and here back over to this side you can see here how we ran our hideaway wire it came out down here like I say we ran it right across the factory wiring here we ran it all the way over to here and over here we have tied up our hot duo module or our echo heart module and that's where our wire is going to be plugged in now we zip tied this so it isn't going to be rattling around some of these cars may have a secondary battery back here you'll have to work around a little bit but you can definitely see there's easy to get to a lot of room so once you tie all that up you should be good to go reassemble everything and i think that's about all um trying to think if there's any other things i needed to remind you about on this install keep the fuse appropriate on my system here two tir3s and one pair of hot duos i am running a five amp fuse and it is more than enough so hopefully this helped you like i say uh, it's just what i did uh, i'm not saying it's the best method in the entire world i'm just saying this is how it works for me and it seemed like it worked out good on this 2020 explorer so maybe it'll work for you too thanks again for watching wicked warnings and uh, hopefully this was helpful.